Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India to this topic in biochemistry. Myself, Dr. Chandrika Nayak, Professor of Biochemistry at Manipal Academy of Higher Education. So, what is the topic? The topic is clinical application of enzyme inhibition. But to understand the application of enzyme inhibition, we need to know certain basics. So, let us define the learning goals. The learning goals are what is an enzyme first of all? After we know what is an enzyme, we shall see what are enzyme inhibitors, who are these inhibitors. After this, we move on to study as to what is competitive type of enzyme inhibition, because there are two types. Out of them, we will learn what is competitive type. Then finally comes our topic as to what is the application in the field of medicine. Using this knowledge of enzyme inhibition, how do we apply it for treatment of diseases in medicine and healthcare? So, then a quick wrap up or a summary and some practice questions. So, let us begin with the basic thing first that is what is an enzyme? So, enzyme is a substance or a catalyst that will enhance a chemical reaction. So, what is a chemical reaction? You have a substrate, a chemical process that converts a substrate to a product is called a biochemical reaction. This can take place on its own substrate to product the reaction can go spontaneously. But if you have an enzyme, what happens? You speed up the reaction. So, say you need half an hour to do this, you have the enzyme, you can do it within 2 minutes. So, you are enhancing. So, an enzyme is catalyzing the reaction. Secondly, it is just a protein or a RNA molecule. So, what are these enzymes? They are either proteins or sometimes can be an RNA molecule, but majority of the times they are all proteins. Enzymes are proteins. And what do they do? I told you it speeds up the reaction. Conversion rate goes on increasing. And if you have something else along with enzyme, If you have a partner with it, it will do the function faster. So, you have a coenzyme or a cofactor along with the enzyme, you can further speed up the reaction. So, that is about the supporting factor for enzyme. But now comes the important concept that is uh, specificity, sorry before that, specificity assures that you can control all the metabolic pathways. So, all the metabolism after we eat food till we get energy, we have multiple chemical reactions and to speed up these reactions, we have enzymes in our body doing it very specifically. And once again, I come to the important topic and that is if you have an inhibitor here. In the presence of an inhibitor, what happens is you are going to slow down this biochemical reaction. So, what does an enzyme inhibitor do? It will decrease the activity of the enzyme. Now, the decreasing of activity can be temporary or it can be permanent. Temporary, you remove the inhibitor, it starts functioning ok. Permanent means this inhibitor will destroy the enzyme itself. That time it becomes a permanent inhibition, clear? So, that is enzyme inhibition, you are trying to slow down the process. So, we are done with what is an enzyme, let us move ahead. How does an enzyme act? You have an enzyme, that enzyme will have an active site and on the active site, 
you will have a substrate coming and sitting. So, enzyme and substrate join together. What forms is called the enzyme substrate complex. Now, this is the ES complex. It will not directly form pro product. It will get first converted to an activated state of ES. So, that is why I have put an asterisk along with ES. That means, it undergoes certain change and after that what happens is it will release the product. So, the substrate will change and the product will be formed. So, I repeat enzyme binds to substrate at the active site, undergoes a change and converts the substrate to product. So, it is released from the enzyme. So, that is what is given here in the slide E plus S gives enzyme substrate, activated state and then finally, product is released. You have the free enzyme ready for the next reaction. Let us begin with enzyme inhibitors. They are compounds which when present even in small traces can actually damage the enzyme activity. So, it blocks the enzyme action. And where does it bind to? It can bind to the active site of the enzyme or to some other place on the enzyme, but what will it do? It will block the action of the enzyme. That is why it is getting the name enzyme inhibitor, inhibits, does not allow it to act. And does it mean once it binds, it is totally damaging? No, there are two types. It can be reversible or irreversible. Some types reversible. You remove the inhibitor, enzyme is fine. Some types it totally destroyed the enzyme, that is irreversible. So, you have inhibitions of two types, reversible or irreversible. And depending upon whether it binds to active site or not, you have types that is competitive inhibition and non-competitive inhibition. So, inhibition in enzymes can be of two types, competitive or non-competitive. So, what is competitive inhibition? The inhibitor has a structural resemblance to the enzyme's uh, substrate. This is my enzyme. So, if this is my substrate, the inhibitor, let me use a different color for that. It is actually having competition with this substrate. It also can fit into the active site. It has structural resemblance to the substrate and therefore, competes with it and it can glow and block the active site and when it blocks the active site, enzyme cannot act. So, that is competitive inhibition. So, the first point what you should remember is competitive inhibition takes place if the inhibitor has structural resemblance to the substrate. So, if it has resemblance, what will it do? It will compete with it. So, what can happen? Just see this diagram changing. If there are too many inhibitors, now this one will come and block the active site. It will not allow the substrate to bind, no chemical reaction. So, it will compete. That is why the term competitive inhibition. And then what happens? If this is present in large numbers, reaction is blocked, but it increases the came of the enzyme. That means, if there is inhibitor, you will need more substrates. Because there is competition, you will need more substrates. In other words, what are you saying? You are trying to increase the came or decrease the affinity for the substrate. And the Vmax of the reaction, that is the velocity of the reaction can be attained only at high concentration. So, you need a lots of substrate to bring the Vmax. That is because there are inhibitors there. And then most cases, this is a type of reversible inhibition. How do you reverse inhibition? You go on adding more substrates. It will knock out all the inhibitors and that is why it is said as reversible. It was not a permanent attachment of inhibitor. E and I was not a permanent bonding. It was only temporary. You add more substrates, 
it will knock out the inhibitor from the active side and the process continues. So, that is why please remember competitive type of enzyme inhibition is reversible. How do you reverse it? Add more substrate, fine. So, this knowledge of competitive inhibition we proceed to understand its application in healthcare. So, clinical application of competitive inhibitors. So, I just spoke about competitive enzyme inhibition. How do we use this in the field of medicine? That is clinical application. With the knowledge of competitive inhibitors, we have tried to design drugs. So, we study an enzyme, we try to make drugs, try to stop that reaction and cure the disease. So, drug designing is based on the knowledge of competitive enzyme inhibition. So, you can elucidate enzyme mechanisms with that and do research on diseases and then to block specific pathways. Now, let me give you an example, have a look at the board. You have a substrate, you have to make a particular product, let us say this product is cholesterol. Now, there is a patient who has high cholesterol, he does not want cholesterol to be produced in the body. Now, you will give a drug to him. What drug? a drug that will not produce cholesterol. So, how do we do that? Say for example, this is a pathway that produces cholesterol. You will design a drug that will block this enzyme. So, design a competitive inhibitor for this enzyme. So, what will happen? You will block this reaction. So, you made a competitive inhibitor, blocked it, pathway does not take place, your cholesterol will not be produced. So, this is what is known as blocking the metabolic pathway and then treatment. We have treatment for antibacterials, antivirals, anti-cancer agents. What are all they? They are all competitive inhibitors of enzymes, fine. So, what is the clinical utility of competitive inhibitors? You can use these antimetabolites for several purposes. Treatment of metabolic diseases with limited toxicity. By giving the inhibitors, you are actually curing the person, but not much toxicity to him. And then you can block specific pathways or you can activate certain pathways, is not it? So, you can block certain pathways and prevent the accumulation of products which you do not want. I gave you a classical example of cholesterol. You do not want cholesterol in that person, block the pathway, cholesterol will not be produced. So, that is the application. And then suppression of the critically imported pathways like for example, there are bacteria growing in your body. Design a drug that will kill the bacteria only, not you. So, that is called as antibacteria. You want to kill the virus in your body, not you then use the antivirals. You have cancer, use anti-cancer drugs, it will stop cancer progression. So, this is all the application of competitive inhibition. So, let us go further. We have different types of uh, inhibitors used as drugs, antibacterials, antivirals, anti-tumor agents and there are a few, let us put them under the other category. So, four categories, we will try to give examples and try to understand. So, let us begin with the most common antibiotic or antibacterials. So, the most important drug that we remember when we say antibiotic is the sulfa drugs or sulfonylamide. So, it has resemblance to a compound called as PABA, para amino benzoic acid. So, what happens? You give sulfa drugs the bacteria gets confused. Instead of using PABA, it will start using sulfa drugs and it will inhibit the enzyme. And if you inhibit bacterial enzyme that is dihydrotyroid synthetase, what will happen? Bacteria cannot grow. 
if bacteria cannot divide if they cannot grow that means you are killing the bacteria in the body and that is the purpose of antibiotics. So, you are controlling the bacterial infection. How did you control? You use the competitive inhibitor and that is sulfa drug. So, in this all this process human is not affected because we get folic acid by consuming it in the diet. So, that uh, brings us to the end of sulfa drugs. Let us move on to certain other drugs which are actually mimicking amino acids. The best example cycloserine. It is an analog of serine. It is just like our serine amino acid. It will stop the synthesis of sphingosine, sphingomyelin. What are you achieving? You are actually trying this trying to use this drug to treat tuberculosis or UTI or urinary tract infections. The best uh, drug is cycloserine. You have azacerine. This is also an analog of serine. By using this analog, what are you trying to do? You are inhibiting the enzyme phosphoribosyl amidotransferase. And by doing so, it is a very good type of anti-cancer agent. You use this, the cells will not divide. So, you are curing cancer. Then we let us make a list of anti-tumor agents, which are all the anti-cancer drugs that are in use nowadays. We have a group of anti-cancer agents or anti-tumor agents called as folate analogs. Methotrexate comes in the list. It is the first and the most common uh, used anti-cancer agent. What is methotrexate resembling? Methotrexate is an inhibitor of which enzyme? Dihydrofolate reductase. So, if you use methotrexate, what will happen? you will be decreasing the purine and pyrimidine production. That means, you are not producing DNA. If you do not produce DNA, no cell division, no cell division, no cell proliferation. So, you are trying to cure cancer. So, decrease DNA synthesis, decrease cell division and that is why methotrexate becomes a very good anti-cancer drug. There are two more belonging uh, folate analogs that is pyrimethamine and trimethoprin. Pyrimethamine is used as an anti-malarial and trimethoprin is used for bacterial infections. So, these are all the three belonging to the same group folate analog. Why did we call it folate analog? Because it resembles folic acid in structure and you use it for treatment. Let us go to the next category of anti-tumor agents. They are analogs of the nuclear bases design certain drugs which will resemble your purines or pyrimidines. So, we have two types that is pyrimidine analogs and the purine analogs. So, let us begin with the first one that is the pyrimidine analog. The most commonly used anti-cancer agent 5-fluorouracil. It has structure similar to the uracil. Uracil is a pyrimidine. So, it resembles pyrimidine structure and by using this you will block which enzyme? Thymidylate synthase. So, if you block this enzyme, what will happen? No uh, pyrimidines, no TMP production. And so, DNA synthesis comes down, cell division comes down, cell proliferation comes down, you are trying to cure cancer. So, that is why 5-fluorouracil is commonly used in chemotherapy. Then comes another pyrimidine analog and that is cytosine arabinoside. You also have acyclovir. Now, these will be used as pyrimidine analogs. They will block the DNA polymerase action. Basically, what are you trying to do? Stop cell division. So, you are blocking DNA synthesis, blocking cell division. So, you use this for a particular type of cancer called as leukemia. So, the most commonly used cytosine arabinoside is for leukemia patients. Let us talk about purine analogs. Pyrimidines was cytosine, thymine analogs. Purine means you are talking about the purine analogs. 6 mercaptopurine and you also have 6 thioguanine. Now, they are analogs of purine. Which enzyme are they blocking? Adenylose succinate synthetase. And so, what happens? you will not have nucleotides, then you do not have DNA and RNA produced because these are going to block, it blocks nucleic acid synthesis and so this is also an anti-cancer agent. 
Let us come to the other drugs that are commonly used nowadays. First among them is statins and very common nowadays in the population. Hypercholesterolemia patient, a person had a heart attack or a myocardial infarction or some people have high cholesterol, the doctor prescribes statins. What is the statin doing? It is blocking cholesterol synthesis. So, statin is a competitive inhibitor of which enzyme? HMG-CoA synthase. Now, HM, sorry, HMG-CoA reductase. HMG-CoA reductase, if you block this by competitive inhibition, you can block cholesterol synthesis. So, you treat, use this for treatment of hypercholesterolemia. Next, we talk about treatment of gout, allopurinol. Now, this is used in the treatment of gout. It blocks the enzyme xanthine oxidase. Now, this is called suicide inhibition because the drug is taken up by the enzyme and the enzyme kills itself with allopurinol. It, it converts allopurinol to oxypurinol and oxypurinol kills xanthine oxidase. So, it is like you are calling the inhibitor and killing yourself. That is why it is called as suicide inhibition and this is commonly used in the treatment of gout. Then comes ethanol. We have heard people drinking some local alcohol and then dying. That is because they have high methanol content. Now, if a patient is brought in such a state to the hospital that he consumes some cheap liquor and you want to treat him, you use ethanol there. What is ethanol? Ethanol is a competitive inhibitor for alcohol dehydrogenase. So, you put the person on ethanol, it will nullify the action of methanol. So, that is what you are doing to try and save the person from methanol poisoning. Then comes a group of anti-hypertensive drugs that is people with hypertension, they will be put on these drugs. It can be captopril, enalapril or lisinopril, all these are ACE inhibitors, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. By doing this, what are you achieving? You are trying to bring down the level of angiotensin 2. All of us know that angiotensin 2 is a powerful vasoconstrictor. It will increase the blood pressure. So, you do not produce that itself. How do you do that? You use ACE inhibitors, do not produce angiotensin 2. You try to bring down the blood pressure of that person. So, it is a very commonly used antihypertensive drug. We move further to a next group of antibiotics that is penicillin and amoxicillin. Penicillin is actually a blocker of the enzyme transpeptidase and it will prevent the bacterial cell wall synthesis. You will not allow bacteria to grow. It becomes a very good antibiotic. What group of antibiotic? We call it as beta lactam variety of antibiotic. Then comes omeprazole. People who are suffering from acidity all know about this drug. Omeprazole is a powerful proton pump inhibitor. So, it tries to produce or uh, sorry, it tries to bring down the acid production in the stomach. So, it is a very common anti acid producer. So, you use this drug and you treat, use this to treat people who have gastric ulcers due to hyperacidity. Omeprazole is an inhibitor of proton pump. Then comes dicomerol, that is anti-clotting. You do not want clotting to take place in this person. So, it actually inhibits an enzyme called as vitamin K epoxide reductase. Now, it is used as an anticoagulant. You do not want the clotting to take place. Let me give you an example. People who are susceptible to stroke or those who had some cardiac replacements like valve replacements in the heart, they will be put on lifelong anticoagulants. So, this drug can be given there. Aspirin, indomethacin, phenylbutazone is the next group. That is, you have this drug which is NSAID, non steroidal anti inflammatory drug. So, whenever a person is having pain or you do not want inflammation, you can use this drug. So, what does it do? It inhibits prostaglandin synthase, specifically, inhibitor of cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase. And so, you bring down the prostaglandin production, you stop inflammation. You have a next drug, neostigmine. It inhibits acetylcholine esterase. So, which sort of patients do you use? It is to treat myasthenia gravis. Then you have alpha methyl dopa. 
this is an inhibitor of dopa decarboxylase and this is also used to treat people with hypertension. Then the most common uh, flu drug that we say Tamiflu is Osaltamivir. It inhibits neuraminidase and it is used to treat influenza in patients. Then you have isonicotinic acid hydrazide, very common anti-tuberculosis drug. Now this is also a competitive inhibitor. Now it is resembling pyridoxal that is the vitamin. So those people who are put on anti-tuberculosis therapy, they are also given vitamin B6 because otherwise it will bring down B6 level. So INH treatment means you are putting the patient on B6 therapy also. So let us quickly summarize. The knowledge of competitive innovation has helped the healthcare field or the medicine field a lot. How? It has helped us to design drugs. So we have designed novel pharmaceutical drugs with this knowledge of competitive enzyme inhibition. So you use this to stop pathways, you use this competitive inhibitors to block unwanted pathways and also to prevent accumulation of undesired metabolites. You do not want some compound to accumulate, use a drug. I told you the best example, cholesterol, you do not want it, use the drug statin, cholesterol would not accumulate in that person. Then what are the most commonly used drugs? They can be analogs of amino acids, they can be analogs of purines, pyrimidines, they can be analogs of folates or polyamines and many more. So, these are the drugs antimetabolized that are successfully used today in the field of healthcare. They are antibacterials, antivirals, anti tumor agents or anti cancer agents, and then a list of others as I have mentioned here. So, let us quickly revise 5 fluorouracil, which is the condition when you will use this. Is it an antibiotic? Is it an antiviral? anti cancer or anti coagulant it is for chemotherapy it's an anti cancer agent anti metabolites they can be structural analogs of what whom are they trying to resemble are they the resemblers of substrates are they the resemblers of products do they resemble enzymes or enzyme substrate they are mimicking the structure of substrate. That is the correct answer. They are used because they resemble the structure of substrates. Let us go on to a third question. Which of the following antimetabolite is used to treat hypercholesterolemia? Which drug? Allopurinol, cycloserin, simvastatin, methotrexate. I told you the group of drug. Yes, statin drugs. So, it is simvastatin used for hypercholesterolemia. And one last question before I wind up and that is which of the following statement is true regarding competitive enzyme inhibition? Will it decrease the KM of the enzyme or will it increase the KM? Similarly, will it decrease the Vmax or will it increase the Vmax? Which is the best answer for competitive enzyme inhibition? The answer is it will increase the came of the enzyme. Thank you.